there's a few things that change. Uh, like coming up on our colder times, uh, we'll do a, a brisket chili. Uh, we'll add the brisket chili in there, and then we'll add specials to the menu every, try to do it every week. It depends if I have time to create something or not. You know, I'm also using firefighters, so that interferes. So like this week, I got to work Friday, Sunday, Tuesday. So it takes away time from trying to create a new menu item and try to teach them like, hey, this is exactly how we're going to make it, and this is what we're going to do, and this flavor, flavor profiles. For the most part, what's up there is what we have year round. Your traditional brisket, our turkey's fantastic, uh, sausage, pork belly, our pork belly's really good too. Our beef ribs are fantastic. I like to say we make the biggest beef ribs out there. I do the plate ribs, which are the three ribs. And when, when I serve them, I pull out the middle ribs so you get even a bigger piece of meat. Uh, usually when you buy a beef rib, it's about two, two and a half pounds. And I sell it for $30. And the reason I did that is I lose money on it selling for $30, but I want to give people that ex experience of being able to buy one. I don't want people to break the bank to try it. So there was a guy, he came in, Brian Wilson, he came in uh, probably about a year ago now, first time, and he bought a beef rib. And he was surprised, he was shocked. He's like, oh my gosh, dude, I was expecting the beef rib to be this huge. So he made a TikTok video on it that went viral, that ended up getting, a, I think, one and a half or two million views on it blew up social media has large impact on uh restaurants the next day people were calling like hey man y'all got that beef room uh trying to get that beef room the brisket and beef ribs, we both use a double r ranch for which is snake river farms uh sister company snake river farms is uh kind of like uh texas wagyu fantastic cut of meat you have in-house sausage right so yes sir. one we have right now is garlic and also a jalapeno cheddar uh I tried to switch that around, make new things. Uh, the one that was most popular was the uh, taco sausage. <laughs> I can't remember say if he hit a sausage. Yeah, the taco sausage. When I do sausage, it's always all, all beef. I'm a fan of all beef sausage. Originally, I wanted to make a fajita sausage, and I made it, and it turned out to taste somewhere like a taco, and that's how I came up with the taco sausage. The original one had like bell peppers and onions and jalapenos and stuff in it, and then I switched it over to where it was uh, all beef with cheddar cheese in it, and then uh, all sorts of different seasonings to make it taste like the uh, taco sausage, okay. or taste like a uh, deconstructed street taco. Uh, Do you have that today, or? No, I don't. Oh. When I, w I was gonna bring some peppers up here, a buddy of mine sent me, I was gonna create the uh, Five Finger Death Punch sausage again, which is a combination of five different peppers. This one was gonna have like the Carolina Re Reaper in it, uh, jalapenos in it. Uh, I haven't decided what other peppers to put in there yet. I was going to create that with some cheddar cheese in it, just that power punch where you take a bite of it and it hits you, but at the same time, it's full of flavor. I did a season the pork loin, then taking a pork belly with the skin on, wrapped the pork loin with that, with all sorts of different seasonings, uh, smoked it so you have that super crispy skin on the outside, along with the flavor. Five years ago, I told James, I was like, let's do a bon me sausage. So he created bon me sausage. That was fantastic. I work in Southwest Houston at the fire department, and bon mi's are all over the place over there. And they're fantastic. I miss and, bon <laughs> Dude, you need to go there Southwest Houston and get you one while you're in town. We just, we did the whole entire everything else in there, like the jalapeno, cilantro, carrots, yeah. and the, the sauce and everything inside of it. And then you could eat it with some bread if you wanted the whole entire full experience. You were in the Marines uh, for how long? Four years. Four years. I was, uh, I joined the Marine Corps in 2000. Uh, when I first signed up, I signed up to be a crash fire rescue. Uh, got went through boot camp, went through MCT school, and did not get crash fire rescue. I got aviation horn instead. I built the uh, rockets, missiles, whatnot for the helicopters. Was there during a? Uh, I was on West Coast when September 11th happened, waiting for officers inspection. And then in 2003, I went to uh, Kuwait and Iraq in January until October 2003 came back. Uh, Got out in March of 2004, actually April of 2004. I turned all my paperwork here in early. Uh, drove back to Tallball and I surprised my parents. They had no idea I was coming home. I told my sister, I was like, hey, meet them at Rancho Grande. And I went in there way beforehand, sat down, wearing my uniform. They sat down with uh, my sister and they were sitting there talking like, all right, Shelly, what, what's so important that you wanted to meet us today? They sat down, ordered tea, ordered their drinks. I came up, walked behind them, I go, 
hey, how's everything over here? Y'all need anything, a refill or anything? They looked at me and go, oh, no, we're good. So went back to the conversation like, so what's important today? <laughs> I walked past them and looked at them and they go, are you serious? They looked up, they're like, oh, Michael, what are you doing here? And then March of 2005, I joined the Youth Fire Department. And throughout that whole time, you obviously had a, like the bugging you of like food in general. Yeah, I always liked cooking when I was in Iraq. I was able to get beef and cook it over a grill like steaks out there. And same thing like in the fire department, cooking breakfast. One reason I took count like over was one of the, uh, there was one guy that was always cooking breakfast in the morning. Every single morning he birthed the uh, rolls. So I cooked him one morning while he was gone on vacation and they turned out perfectly. So all the guys took a picture of it, sent it to him like, this is what rolls are supposed to look like. <laughs> so that he was replaced. Yeah. <laughs> That was back when I was at Station 10 in the Southwest Season. That was a busy station. We also had rescue. Uh, the rescue only responds to major calls like uh, major accidents where education needed. Uh, fires were that go to multiple alarms that were heavy working fires. So we might be gone on other calls, EMS calls and stuff like that. They were still in the house, so they were able to cook when we were unable to. Now I'm at Station 60. It's a single house, so it's a uh, uh, ambulance, a medic unit, and then the fire truck. And because how busy we are, while cooking, a lot of times we'll get dispatched in the middle of it. I originally got into barbecue probably about 2006. I was up at the fire station, and one of the guys was up there cooking a brisket. I was like, "Hey man, what you doing?" He's like, "Oh man, I'm cooking a brisket for tonight." He got up there. I was like, "What time do you get here?" He's like, "Oh man, I got here about three o'clock this morning. Started the fire. I got it on here." I was like, "Oh man, that's interesting." So I watched how he did it. I was like, "Hey man, next time, uh, next time, you mind if I try to do it?" He goes, "Yeah, that's fine." So uh, I reached out to my cousin who uh, participated in the Houston Livestock Show on Rodeo, uh, which is like the World Series of Barbecue Cookoffs. It's one of the largest cookoffs in the world. He told me, "Hey, go to Smitty's Meat Market. Tell him I sent you. It'll hook you up." So I went over to Smitty's Meat Market. I told him who I was. He goes, oh yeah. He pulled out a Ziploc bag. He goes, here, try this rub. He gave it to me. So I cooked that brisket. It turned out good. It turned out a little bit better, I thought, than it would have been for the first time brisket. But I was like, man, I can still cook this better. So almost like every single month I started asking. I was doing this for years. I would start cooking two briskets. I would cook one for the fire station, one for me. And then finally one time for 4th of July, 2016. I cooked one for the family. And they've never had my cooking before. They're like, okay, you brought a brisket, whatever. <laughs> uh, they're like, what do we have to do? I say, I already cooked it. It's ready to go. I just got to warm it up. Like, all right. So we went out on the boat. We're in, uh, on the ocean. We come back. They're like, all right, is it ready? Like, yeah, all I got to do is cut it up. So I cut it up. I served to them. They're like, oh, my gosh, this is actually really good. <laughs> my dad goes, hey, I want a brisket for Christmas. So for Christmas, I got out there, uh, smoked a whole uh, couple of briskets. I cooked a... Uh, some ribeyes and cut that up and served it to the family. Family's like, oh my gosh, dude, this is fantastic. You need to open up a place. Same time, buddy of mine, James McFarland, was working at, he worked at the Pit Room, which is a top 50 barbecue restaurant. And then he worked at Tejas, which is a top 10 barbecue restaurant. He was working with them at the time. And that's when 2017 came along and we teamed up and started our own place. Originally, we started up the road approximately about maybe three miles uh, north of here on 1774 in a food truck. We started in 2018. Uh, we talked about a year before 2017 during Thanksgiving. My family has a piece of property up there that came available. I told James, I was like, hey man, this come available. You still want to do this? He's like, let me take a look. He looked at it. He's like, yeah, man, let's do this. Set everything up. Got our pit from Evie Mays uh, out there in Wilford, Texas. Got the trailer. Finally opened up in May of uh, 2018. He was still working at Tejas at the time. And he, Scott was like, yeah, man, you can do your thing up there on the weekend. So we, we started doing that, blew up. 2019, I think it was, we made the top 25 new barbecue restaurants, Texas Monthly. About the same time, Lone Pine Brewery created their beer garden up there. They uh, opened up outside, nice outside area, cover trees uh, in downtown Old Magnolia, had better seating. Low Pine Brewery does uh, Yellow Rose Beer, which is considered one of the best beers in the United States, IPAs in the United States. Then uh, we were just making the top 25, so we can't talk to them, decided to move up there and start selling barbecue out of there till 2021. That's when we moved to this current location, got out of the food truck. 
me and James stayed together up there in Lone Pine, and then he had a, a newborn baby, his his and his wife's first baby. And between, he was in the oil field still, so between working the oil field, the new baby, and the drive from Katy all the way up to Magnolia, which was an hour, was interfering with his family. So he decided to kind of back off and let me take over the business. So why barbecue? Born and raised here in Texas, the world restaurant is right now. I grew up about a mile and a half down the road, two miles down the road. Uh, it's something I've always enjoyed. I remember one of the places when I'm growing up eating was Tom Ball Barbecue. Lockhart, going there with the family. Uh, Gonzalez, we would go up to my great -grand or my grandparents' place. Uh, then we would go always go in Gonzalez, go, go to the meat market. We'd go in there, order our food, sit down as family, eat, hang out, socialize. It was a family thing. It was just one of those things that stick with you. It's a memory.